Hello again. What's up? Um, so uh, as I'm sure you might have heard me share before, uh, my time in uh, my church's youth group growing up actually played a huge role in shaping the faith that I have today. I was raised going to church every single Sunday. I actually don't know what it's like to have a life where you don't go to church every Sunday. Um, that's, just, that's just my life. That's, that's just what I am. Um, but a huge reason why my devotion to God and to my experiences um, can be led to my experiences in my own church's youth group. Um, and one of the things, the highlights of my church's youth group was the weeks that we would spend at camp every summer. Um, I grew up going to Round Lake, which is the same church camp that we go to here at Momentum. And I started going there when I was in elementary school all the way up through middle school. And then at my church, we would go to Summer in the Sun once we were high schoolers at Kentucky Christian University, which is kind of a similar camp conference type week uh, of camp. Um, and I loved going to these camps. They were the highlight of my summer. Um, and I would, I would have powerful speakers who would teach to me. Uh, the worship was always just, there's something different about, about the worship when you're at camp. I don't know what it is um, because you're surrounded by your peers or just the environment that you're in, but worship was always really moving. Um, and you just, you just had a lot of fun. There was a lot of fun going on around you, whether it was swimming or rock climbing or getting stuck in the middle of the lake because you don't know how to canoe with a paddle because that happened to me. Um, whatever happened, it was just fun. Um, but for me, it was not only fun, it was also life-changing. And the two things that made it life-changing were the relationships that I built and the habits that I acquired when I was there. Um, church camp was where I first learned to put into practice the idea of, of a daily God's time. Um, built into the schedule of pretty much every camp or conference or week that I've been a part of has been a quiet time, usually in the morning, and it was built into the schedule, and you were encouraged to kind of go off and find a place on your own, which I love to go and find a place outside, somewhere quiet, somewhere where nobody else was really around, and in the program or like the little booklet that you would get for the week, there would be, you know, maybe prompts or things to read, questions to think about if you didn't know what to do during that time. But my favorite thing would be to just read and to journal, uh, whether it was like a, a book about Christian living or whether it was the Bible itself. But I loved that time. And I would look forward to it every day, which is kind of weird for me because I'm really extroverted. So the idea that that was kind of one of the highlights of my day was to go off by myself it is a little bit strange, but it, it was. It was one of the things that I looked forward to. And the thing about it was, um, the first thing that it did was it, it actually taught me the importance of having a God's time. Like when I hadn't even thought of that or done that yet, that's what instilled that practice in me. And then once I had started doing that over the years, there'd be times when I had kind of fallen off and I wasn't doing that anymore. You know, I wasn't having a daily God's time. And I would go to camp and I would get like recalibrated, like back into the habit. I'd be like, yes, I need to be doing this every day. And then I could leave camp and continue doing it, you know, when I'm back in my daily life. But the cool thing about it was just all the distractions were taken away, all the things that normally make you um, unfocused are, are completely taken away from you, and it's literally built into your schedule. There's no excuse not to do it, um, which was always really powerful for me. And then the other thing that was huge for my weeks at camp were, like I said, the relationships that I built. Um, I made friends at camp that became lifelong friends, friends that I still have to this day. And they, they, were, they were people who were already in my youth group, but it kind of took it from being a casual friendship that you would see week in and week out at youth group to being like deep spiritual friendships. You know, and they were forged over late nights in dorm rooms when we were supposed to be sleeping, but instead we were eating an entire package of Oreos with peanut butter and crying and sharing things about our lives and confessing things. And those were the deep conversations that continued after camp. And these girls became bridesmaids and the maid of honor in my wedding. They became my college roommate. They became the best friends that I still get together with and talk to to this day. Um, and those deep spiritual friendships were key to my relationship with God. And they were key to really me staying focused on following Jesus through high school. And they weren't even, they weren't even students at my high school. We didn't go to the same high school. So we, we actually had to really work at that relationship, but it was so powerful. And the bonds were so strong because of the crazy things we did at camp and driving our leaders crazy by singing worship songs at the top of our lungs in the van, which I'm sure that they hated, even though it was worship songs, because let's face it, six hours of singing with like 10 girls in a car, not fun. Um, but we had fun, 
right? But these were the things that forged our relationship, and those were the things um, that really made a difference for my relationship with God, and they all came, and they can all be traced back to weeks at camp. So that's why uh, camp is really important to me and something that is part of my story. So check out this video. Good morning, Momentum. My name is Alina Smith. I attend the Mo Group Amplify, and I want to talk to you guys today about church camp and just my experience and why I think um, if you're a student, you should definitely check out church camp this year. Um, so Momentum, we attend two church camps. So one for middle schoolers and one for high schoolers. So the one um, for middle schoolers is um, wild side. It's just such a loving environment. Um, a lot of fun, a lot of craziness. If you're a leader, you get no sleep. Um, if you volunteer, you get no sleep, but it's just a fun week. Um, water tubing, paint war. Um, they always have an amazing message for the week, and it's just a lot of fun um, for the students and for anyone involved overall. I started going to church camp around first grade, and a good while ago, um, my brother, who was four years younger than me, was getting ready to go to church camp for the first time. Naturally, he was pretty nervous, um, but I, at that point, was the church camp veteran, so I wanted to calm his nerves a bit. So I, I told him, church camp is awesome. You will love it so much that you will not even want to play video games. Now, if you know me, I'm a bit of a gamer, so that was probably the biggest compliment I could have given church camp. And then if you are in high school or going into high school, um, you have Connect, and um, that is an amazing camp as well. It's at the same Round Lake that um, Wild Side is. The activities are awesome. I know we go off campus a couple times to um, go to like, this fun center, and there's mini golf and all that good stuff. So um, I definitely love Connect because they always have like a service project that year. Some of my favorite things about going to Round Lake every summer for camp is uh... Um, I love the worship there. It just it hits different, you know, and I also absolutely love all the games like uh, you got nine square um, You can do tubing swimming and my personal favorites Gaga ball um, But also all the connections you make while um, you're there and I know I personally still talk to a lot of the people uh, I've uh, met there over the past couple years so yeah, I encourage you to go to church camp because you only have middle school and high school once, you know? And you can only be a camper for that amount of time. If you're in high school and you want to volunteer this summer, volunteer for Wildside and the Young Work Crew because pouring into those students and having a different perspective of what serving is like is just a blessing within itself. Camp is just a big part of my life. I mean, I, I was going in fifth grade and I've been going since then and it is just a huge 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 part of my life and my relationship with jesus i mean i was at um i was volunteering at a camp when um i felt god uh telling me to pursue ministry and teaching it's just such a great thing and you know it's fun like especially as like a middle schooler like camp is just this big thing and you know, going into it, I wasn't so big into the whole Jesus part. <laughs> I was just there for like, oh, fun, camp, you know? But, you know, you go for fun and then you leave saved. If you are already registered and ready to go um, and you have a friend in mind that should go, invite them because, you know, going to church camp can be life-changing. I gave my life to Jesus at Round Lake. I was baptized um, freshman year of high school at Connect Church Camp. So. Um, God just speaks to you that week, man. He does amazing things through, um, through those camps, you know. I also notice when I'm at those camps and um, something's been on my heart heavy or I just really need to an answer to a certain prayer, God just speaks to me at that camp. It's kind of, I'm always like going ready to camp and being like, all right, God, you're going to answer so many things this week and I can't wait. God just really speaks to me um, at Round Lake, you see at church camp. So if you have some prayers unanswered, um, God could speak to you um, because it's just such a holy place. I first went to Connect the summer before my freshman year. And up to that point, I really considered myself to be an atheist. I just wanted to go to get out of the house and see my friends. And I wasn't expecting to get anything out of the camp. But I'd say the second night, 
when Matt delivered a sermon that circled around the parable of the prodigal son was when everything clicked into place for me. At that point, I really felt just the weight of the world get lifted off of my shoulders and I knew that only one person, only one being could be responsible for that. And that's God, Jesus. Not soon after we left that camp, I ended up giving my life to Jesus and I've been serving him ever since. God is good and he's faithful. So um, yeah, talk to a leader, talk to Lauren, talk to Melissa and um, ask questions about church camp because I mean, why not go? It's it's amazing and um, it's a great time, guys. Well, I love you guys and stay safe. Bye, Momentum. Oh man, that was powerful. Oh, man, that was powerful. <laughs> So some of you know my story or Dan's story. I'm Shannon Smith. I'm married to the lead minister here, Dan. That it took us almost six years to have kids. Um, and then eventually Zion, Aslan, and Journey come, came along. We were so excited to finally have kids. And I think our number one goal, I think Dan would agree with me, our number one goal once we had children was for our kids to love and follow Christ. And then to lead other people, their kids or people they're surrounded by, to love and follow Christ. Like, this is our number one goal as parents. More than what great college they might get into, more than the extracurriculars that they do in school. Like, if we fail at them knowing and following Jesus, then I feel like maybe we have failed them. And so, before I go into this, you need to know that is our number one goal as parents. Um, I wanted to read this scripture for you. Psalm 78, 4. We do not keep them from our children, and the them you'll see in a minute. We do not keep them from our children. We recite them to the next generation, the praiseworthy and mighty deeds of the Lord, the wonders that he performed. And, like, that's our goal as parents is we want to continually pour into these kids about the praiseworthy and the mighty deeds of our Lord and the wonderful things that he performed, right? And the question, the age-old question of parents is, how? <laughs> how do you do that? Because one of my main fears as a pastor's wife, as a parent in general who follows Jesus, and especially as somebody like a lot of you may serve at Momentum. So you're here probably longer and more than maybe your regular average attender. So the fear is, as you drag your kids along sometimes, what if they end up hating church? What if they end up hating God? Like this was a huge fear of mine. So as all children do, our kids didn't always want to go to Mo Kids. <laughs> Our kids didn't always want to go to youth group. Our kids didn't always want to pray. Our kids didn't always want to go to any event that we might be going to, especially when you're getting up at 5, 6 in the morning to come. They didn't always want to do that. So that left Dan and I questioning, like this parental question, maybe a controversial question, do we make them come? Now, when they were in Mo Kids, like when they were little, babies, toddlers, they had no choice because we were both, I was leading worship, Dan was speaking, and it was like you'd have to leave the screaming kids, sorry, Mo Kids workers, with the Smith kids screaming back in there. We didn't have a choice. But then they get to middle school, and they get to high school, and there is the choice when they can stay home by themselves. Do we make them? And I know this is a controversial topic. Be gracious for me, with me, okay? Because here's the deal. I grew up where we went to everything. And that was back in the day when you had Sunday morning church, Sunday night church, and Wednesday night church, and youth group, and every event under the sun. Like, I had to go to everything. And then there's Dan, who wasn't allowed to go to anything. So it's like these two people trying to raise these kids. Like, what the heck are we going to do? But I truly believe that parental guidance is essential in the spiritual growth of children. Like, I really, in my heart of hearts, believe that, that parental guidance is essential in the spiritual growth of children. So I did what normal people do, is I called somebody with older children than me. 
And I said to my friend Sue Ferguson, and this was important to me and to Dan, Sue and Dave Ferguson are pastors at another church, and they have adult children. They were in their late teens and early 20s who still love and follow God. And I was like, I need to call this woman and see what she did. And so I called her, and my question to her is, did you make your kids go to church events? And she gave me amazing advice. And I personally think this advice can be adapted by anyone, not just parents. I think it's good for people who are single, for students of all ages, for adults who might be married and have kids. I think we can all learn from this advice. But this is the advice that she gave me. She goes, that's a very good question. And what we did is we came up with two lists. We had a non-negotiable list and a negotiable list. And I was like, that is brilliant. That is brilliant. And so she listed for me, here were the non-negotiables for our family. And it's not a lot. And I was like, oh, that's amazing. And then she listed for me, here were the negotiables. And that helped keep the parent-child fights from happening. And so what is in a non-negotiable? Non-negotiable. <laughs> there is no arguing, reasoning, and I love this one, or emotional display that will change whatever's happening. So no matter what, our, our word is our word. And so for Dan and I, we talked about this. Like we actually sat down and talked. So this isn't a list you're going to find in the Bible. But I do recommend that maybe you make a list for yourself, for your family. And ours went like this. So for us, Sunday morning service is a non-negotiable. Like you need to be there because the Bible talks about do not Give, do not give up the meet, meeting like together. Don't give it up because some are in the habit of doing that. So don't give it up. And so we feel like even when they don't feel like it, even when, because man, you think I feel like coming every week? No. <laughs> but even when we don't, Sunday morning service, like we feel like that is really, really important. And I know it's going to affect the jobs that they get. Like I know that. I know that it's going to affect extracurricular activities. And we're not talking, like sometimes every once in a while we have to be gone. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about I'm waking up and not feeling like coming today, okay? And so, but for us, for our family, Sunday morning is a non-negotiable. Youth group, and every church calls their youth group something different. For us right now, it's called Amplify. Um, youth group, we decided, would be a non-negotiable because we feel like it is our kids' time to connect with their peers, but also to connect with other adult leaders who are trying to lead them to Jesus. And our third one, and this was an important one for us, again, maybe not to you, but for us, was church camp. Because at church camp, one week out of the year, Dan found Jesus and it changed his life. For me, I was raised in a Christian family, so for me, what it did was it showed me that the church isn't just local that the church is global, that for over 2,000 years, people have, of all races, of all ages, have been following this God that I cannot see, but they've been following this God that my parents have told me about, and they love it, and it's fun, and it's joy-filled, and I needed to see that as a kid, um, but man, it was, it's hard to leave a kid that might not want to be there. And we've had to do it. <laughs> it's hard because when I leave, I'm like, oh, my gosh, the anxiety that I personally have as a parent for a week is horrendous. Like, I have learned to trust God as I pull away from my kid who might be screaming and crying when they were little, not now. Sorry, Zion, you're 17 now. Um, our kids are 17, 15, and 13 now. So, But, I mean, we've had to do that. Dan's had to personally tell me, get in the car, Shannon. And I'm the one bawling my eyes out as we have driven away. Like, this is hard, but that's how much we personally believe that lives can be changed through one week with no technology, surrounded by people who are loving and following Jesus. And there is a correlation between the number of adults that your kids know that follow Jesus and their own personal relationship with Jesus. So this was really important for us to know their lives can be changed, just like Dan's, just like mine, 
through one week. Our kids actually, (laughs) those were our three uh, non-negotiables. Our kids have actually added another one, which is serving at, at church which I'm so proud of that each of them serve at church and they feel like that is a non-negotiable and that they serve. And I just want to give a huge shout out to all the students at Momentum who have adopted this non-negotiable way without parental guidance. Because we have a ton of students at Momentum who come to church every week without any parent. I mean, that's amazing, right? It's freaking amazing. And the funny thing is, they are our most consistent students. The students that, like Dan, had to find their own ride to church. The students like Dan who would have to sit by themselves sometimes. Like, we have multiple students like that at Momentum, and they are our most consistent. It's amazing to me, so huge shout out to them. And the cool thing, yeah, The cool thing is that leaves us with negotiables. And this is where, man, this is so cool because negotiables, we we have our list, our three or four things on non-negotiables, but our negotiables are things that are open for discussion. Mind you, the kid might not always win. It's open for discussion (laughs) or modification. But those are things like today, the students are all going to Polar Blast. And we have many students going to Polar Blast, which is snow tubing. Many students going... And I have to be okay if my kids don't want to go. Are people going to say, like, the pastor's kids weren't there? Oh, my gosh. Like, are they going to say that? But here's the deal. I had to give that up. Like, if they don't want to go, it's up for discussion. I don't feel like they need to go. And truthfully, the kids usually do win. Um, Overnighters, bowling, freak out. Freak out's this little mini church camp that we do. But we kind of have to be like, That's not on our non-negotiable list, so if they don't want to go, it's up for discussion. Get-togethers, craft night, worship nights for the students. Like, these are things that are now on the negotiable list, but the kids, our kids at least, feel like they have some leeway, and I don't have to be at everything, every time, every moment. Um, I love that Andre picked the song Blessing because it does talk about blessing the children and their children and their children. And so I really think as parents, we give guidance and we have the power through God to change generations. Hi, Momentum. My name is Mike Love and I'm an elder at Momentum. And I'm really excited to get the opportunity to talk with you. Uh, For me, something that stands out with generosity, uh, I think back to when I was in high school. Uh, My junior year of high school, I wasn't actively following Jesus. I wasn't a Christian. And and to me, what led to that decision is I was invited to go to this Christian camp. And I didn't really know what it was like. I wasn't sure I really wanted to go. Uh, But my friends who invited me, they kind of took every excuse away from me. Uh, One of those things is is they they paid for me to go. I had a free trip. And this was an expensive trip, but by them paying for me, uh, it just kind of took those excuses away. and, And I went and I had an incredible time. And I'm so thankful for those people who were generous and and they gave so that I could go to camp, that I could learn about Jesus. And that's something that stands out to me today. And that's why I love giving the momentum because I feel like we're giving to a place that is helping other people learn about who Jesus is. Um, So I love that opportunity. I feel like through hosting different events, I know there's the back to school festival or or handing things out in the Twins Day parade or or just providing for our staff members. I I love the opportunity that that we're on mission uh, for Jesus. A verse that stands out for me is Matthew 28, uh, verse 19, where Jesus says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So I'm excited that we get to be generous together uh, to make that that great commission happen. Uh, Thanks, Momentum. Uh, back in November, we showed that video for the first time, and I'm just going to kind of peel back so you can see behind, under the hood right now, is that the whole service today kind of revolves around that short little video. And uh, that short little video, as weird as it is, kind of makes me a little bit emotional uh, to think about, just because, you know, Mike Love, um, like that, his story, it, it affects me. Like when I thought about it, when he turned it in, before it was even edited and I listened to it, I was like, man, 
That's so crazy that that pivotal event happened in his life and some, some parents paid for him to go to church camp and that's how he came to follow Jesus. And so I started thinking about what would the world be like? What's a world like without Mike Love as a Christian? What's, what's a momentum like without Mike Love as a follower of Jesus? And, and I just started really thinking about that. Like he's on our elder team, which is kind of like our leadership team that, that, that guides and protects the church like a group of spiritual big brothers. And, and uh, he married my good friend Lauren Love and they have two awesome little boys together. One of them you heard interrupt in the video in the background. You know, he's been an amazing servant leader at Momentum. There's just so many things about Mike Love that I love. And Mike's story is so similar to my story. And for those of you who, you know, uh, don't know me, just the real brief thing is, is, is that uh, we're going to send this out in the email today, but I've got like a, like a five-minute urban poem or an acapella rap that's like my testimony. And we're sending out an email link to that today. But my story basically was... I, I grew up in an unchurched family, and I wanted to go to church camp, and my parents said, sure, you can go if you can pay for it, and that was their really nice way of saying, heck no, you don't get any money, you don't get a job, punk. That was their way of saying it. I was like, oh, cool, if I can pay for it, I can go. That was, that was, that was really cool, kind of like the sarcasm of, yeah, sure, you can go, and so I paid 20 bucks for the down payment. I had that, and then on the way to school, I found $50 on the ground. On the way to the bus stop, it was just on the ground. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm going to church camp. And then I brought it home. And my parents were thrilled about that 50 bucks I found on the ground. They were like, oh, you got the money. Yeah, remember you said how I could go if I had the money? We do remember saying that. And I got to go to church camp. And so I started thinking about Mike's video. Like it, it inspired me. There was two things. It inspired me. And honestly, it shamed me. And what I mean by that is, I thought about like all the years now that I've been the lead guy at Momentum, and I look back and I was like, how have I not been more of an advocate for making it easier for kids to get to church camp? Like it's absolutely changed my life. It's absolutely changed Mike Love's life. How have I not been stealing a car to get a ch kid to church camp? Like I'll do anything to get a kid to church camp Like because I know it's such a big deal. How have I not paid more attention to this? How have I just let it happen? And I just felt kind of ashamed, you know, like, man. And, and so honestly, over the last few months, I've been kind of repentant about this. Like, man, I'm sorry, God. I need to do more to figure out how to remove obstacles to get kids to church camp. How have I not been more of an advocate? And so... Money is often an obstacle for unchurched kids getting to church camp. You know, uh, you know me, Mike Love, especially if their parents aren't hyped about the idea. And so for Mike, a Christian family paid for him. For me, you know, uh, God kind of dropped 50 bucks on the ground. And at the end of the school day, that same day, I found a bunch of change in the back row of like the class I was in. And I was like, there's more money. Like, thanks, God. I hear it loud and clear. There's like several dollars of change just laying that fell out of somebody's pocket or something. I was like, this is ridiculous. So um, I'm going to put up here like the weeks of church camp that, that exist at Round Lake. And I want to just kind of explain something real quick. So one, church camp is expensive. It is very, very expensive. So for instance, Wildside, the middle school one that we go to, just to give you an example, it is $350 per camper, 350 bucks. And then there's registration for Connect, which is the high school one we go to around Lake. That's 280 bucks per camper. Um, registration for work crew. I know this is a little confusing, but these are high schoolers who work at Wildside where the middle schoolers go. High schoolers can pay to go serve at work camp. What kind of racket's going on down at Round Lake? Okay, but this is truth, and they pay 200 bucks, and we have students of momentum that love to be in work crew. Um, did I call it work camp? That's a whole other thing. That's World War II. Let's <laughs> strike that from the record, but it's work crew, and then they go down there, and it's 200 bucks. So there are families at Momentum who or students at Momentum who are unchurched, their families don't come with them. And then there are also families at Momentum and students at Momentum who just struggle financially, and they could never pay for their one student or three or four students to go for 350 bucks a pop or 280 bucks a pop. And so back in November 2020, the elders began discussing, like, how can we eliminate obstacles? And I told Mike, man, your story affected me, like, dead serious. Like, it's affected me. And, and how can we start eliminating obstacles for kids and students to get to church camp? And we've decided that out of our main budget, you know, out of your giving to Momentum, 
that, that from now on we're just going to pay all but 50 bucks for every registration for any kid uh, of any age, but today we're going to focus on middle school and high school, to get kids to camp and remove obstacles. And so, yeah. I think, I think it's super awesome. And so just to be super clear, we've decided that out of our main budget, that if you're sending your middle schooler to Wildside, you pay 50 bucks. If you send your kid to high school camp, connect, you pay 50 bucks. If they want to go to work crew, okay, they pay 50 bucks and that's it. Like your, your, your family pays that. And, uh, and I mean, this is for 50 bucks. You can get rid of your kids for five nights. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> had to throw a little bit of a barb in there. And so, so just for an example, so based on Wildside and who we sent last year, or the last year that we could go, uh, you know, the, the, the people that we sent and the high schoolers we sent to Wildside to be a work crew, um, and the adult volunteers, because we pay from the budget for the volunteers completely, because they're taking a week of vacation to do this, to go serve students. So we'll, it'll probably cost, cost us this year for Wildside from the budget about five, uh, about five grand is what we're guessing. Um, just a rough estimate. And, and so that, honestly, that comes from you guys giving to Momentum. And, uh, and, and also, and this is the other one thing that I want to be really clear about, we're, we're also going to have now a special fund. Because in the past, we've had ways that individuals or families or Mo groups could give to help kids go to church camp. So that is stuff that we've done in the past. Uh, but now, for the special case, where there is a kid who's unchurched, like me or Mike, or just a family that struggles to pay 50 bucks a pop even, then we said, let's have, let's have a special fund that people can give to as individuals, as families, or Mo groups can still raise money to give to that fund. And it'll be the student ministry fund for that purpose. And if there's any left over, it can help kids go to things like Polar Blast or you know, other events throughout the year, freak out. Um, and so if you want to give above and beyond what you give to Momentum, then you could say, I'm going to throw some money into that fund. And I'm, you know, it just might be 10, 50, 100, it might be whatever. You know, don't, don't switch your primary giving over to that because we're still, that's the 300 bucks that comes out of the offering. Then 50 bucks as needed for unchurched kids or, or kids who come from families who are just struggling. And so we'll be using that fund generally in $50 increments, if that makes sense. Anytime there's a need, man, that kid, his family isn't supportive of him going or, or, man, they just really are struggling financially. Let's help them by even paying the $50 for them. And so Mo Group still can collect money in jars and that kind of stuff, and we can put it into that student ministry fund. It'll be an awesome way to help unchurched kids get to camp and people who are struggling. But, but one thing is this. We are on a journey as a church, and we've been thinking about this. It's been aggravated through the pandemic. Like, we can't serve in the community much. We can't give in the community much right now. Like, how are we going to do that stuff to continue to grow as a generous church as things loosen up from COVID? And, and the cool thing is, is I feel like through COVID, individually, so many people have become more generous. They've said, man, there's a need. I can do something. I'm on a journey of, of learning to be more generous. I'm going to increase my giving. I'm going to give for the first time. I'm going to become a recurring giver. All these things, that has been happening so much at Momentum. But the other part of that is the elders want us to grow as a church, to be more generous as a church. And this is one way we can do that for students at Momentum and students in the community to say, let's remove obstacles. And also, we will have a plan that we're going to have to work on about Mo Kids. How can we do that too for any age group? Because it starts at first grade. They do day camp. They go for like eight hours. Like you, you drop them off and then you go to Starbucks or go to the public pool or do something local. And then you go back and pick them up. There's, there's zero sleeps for day camp. They don't have to spend the night, okay? Zero sleeps. And then you get to third, fourth grade and then there's two sleeps. So you kind of work your way up, and then eventually fifth, sixth grade, our sixth graders tend to go to wild side, but fifth grade, five sleeps, you know, and so you work your way up to that, but we don't have a plan for this yet, and the reason for that is because day camp only costs 40 bucks, so we just have to kind of figure out, okay, what does this look like now then for Mo Kids, because I would love to get more Mo Kids going to camp and experience it as, as little kids, and so we'll be rolling out a plan for that and figuring that out as we go also, so I just want to kind of close with this, my my, uh, my good friend, Greg Nettle, uh, who used to lead River Tree Christian Church down in Massillon, now he's the president of an organization called Stadia that helps plant churches for kids all across the world. And several years ago, he told me, 
like something they were talking about at their church, just like they see three primary vehicles for life change. And those three primary vehicles are, number one, information. Okay, so you, you can't take this away. The fact is, like, if someone hears powerful and practical preaching or teaching or, or reads something or a small group discussion, and, and that points them to the good news of Jesus and information, powerful information about the gospel, the good news of Jesus can change their lives. The second is relationships. And, and that just means that you might call them providential relationships, like meaning God kind of tweaks some things to make you cross paths with a person that you really needed to meet because they love Jesus. And it impacts your life. And so this happens, and, and these people point you toward the good news of Jesus. And then the third is experiences. And, and that is just like you go on a mission trip to Ecuador. You, you go to the men's camping you know, trip that we do you know, in, in, in June for a weekend. You go to the Momentum's women ret Women's Retreat. Um, you know, you do something like that, and there's something about getting off the grid. There's something about getting away with people. There's something about just generally keeping your phone off and not gaming the entire day or whatever it is. You know, you get there, and you just hear God through people and through that experience. There's just something about that that points you to the good news of Jesus. And so then there's also stuff even on your end, I would say, other than these three, kind of like Lauren mentioned, like your own personal disciplines, that is something life-changing over time. You have these personal disciplines of spending time with God or even pivotal circumstances. You know, you go through a breakup, you move to a new place, you get sick, and, and that is the thing that is a catalyst for life change. But I want you to know that for all three of these, all three of these are, are church camp. Like, like you go and, and like, you know, like all these students, Elena Smith, Bella Berna, Zion Smith in the video, they all talk about the experience of being at church camp. You won't even want to play video games at church camp. Like, it was so amazing. There's something different. The, 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 it just hits different. The worship just hits different there. That kind of stuff. Then you've got like Lauren Love and, and Tony talking about the relationships. Tony says, I keep in touch with these people all year now. Lauren Love saying, these people were in my wedding and they're my best friends now. Relationships. And then you've got Brennan Shy talking about, man, I went and I heard this sermon. This guy named Matt came as a guest speaker, and he preached a, a sermon about the prodigal son, Luke 15. And God just lifted this weight off my shoulders, and later on I gave my life to Jesus, and I've been serving him ever since. Like all three of these life-changing things are going on at church camp. So bottom line, we want to remove obstacles to help kids get to church camp but because we know it can change their lives. And honestly, I am pumped to see where we're going as a church and to see that we have this opportunity to just highly invest in our students even more and in our kids because we want to help kids win. We want to help students win, and we think this is a huge way that we can do it.